Hi, I'm Keith Smith, and I'm a freelance PHP programmer, and I've been a freelance PHP programmer since 2008, and I would like to teach you everything I know. Now, today I'd like to talk about the skills a PHP programmer should have, and uh, I wrote a blog post, uh, believe it or not, probably about two years ago on this exact topic. So uh, I'm just going to go through the, my, my blog post and I'm going to give you some commentary and uh, use it as an outline. So on your screen, you should be able to see it says skills a PHP programmer should have. And there's a graphic there. So let's scroll down. Now, the first skill I believe a, a PHP programmer should have is HTML. Now, HTML is the bone structure of a website. At least that's what I call it. Uh, or a web page. Everything comes down to the actual page. Then you need to know cascading style sheets. And cascading style sheets is uh, the style. It's called cascading style sheets. So uh, it's the style. Font size, font color, um, all of that. Heading sizes, uh, what size uh, and, and what color uh, your uh, fonts are going to be and background colors. There's a lot to CSC, CS, CSS. Boy, got to get that one out there. And uh, it's it's you should have a, a rudimentary understanding of CSS to be a PHP programmer. Uh, the next thing you should know is you should know JavaScript. And and there's two levels of this, and we'll get to the second level after this, but. Uh, basic JavaScript. JavaScript runs in the browser. Uh, all the modern browsers run JavaScript, but they run it a little different. So it, it becomes a little quirky, but there's some workarounds for that or solutions. Uh, so you have to know some basic uh, JavaScript. So you can do form validation and stuff like that. Uh, then uh, an advanced skill would be Ajax. Ajax is a way of using JavaScript to talk to the server replace blocks of, um, of text, uh, change anything actually on the web page. Uh, and when it goes back to the server, it can get information like saying a shopping cart, uh, could change the subtotal, the tax, the total, and so on. With just And just change those particular fields, not the whole form. Uh, it's, it's pretty slick when you see it in action. You'll like it. Uh, Ajax, okay, so you're gonna, eventually you're gonna wanna learn uh, a, J, a JavaScript library, and my favorite is jQuery, and uh, it's, it happens to be uh, a very seasoned uh, or old, uh, old's probably not the right word because that conjures up something. It, it's, it's fresh, but it's been out there a long time. Um, and if you get into uh, WordPress, WordPress uses uh, jQuery for um, as its uh, JavaScript library. Okay, so then to be a PHP programmer, of course, you're going to need to know some PHP, uh, probably a lot of PHP. Um, and so I'll put a link to this article uh, below so that you can you can uh, read the the whole article because it goes into depth on a lot of stuff. So um, MySQL, which is the data server. Um, is is another thing you're going to have to learn. You're going to have to learn how to use that. You're going to have to learn how to use a structured structured query language, which allows you to get your PHP to talk to the the server and uh, the data server. And um, and then uh, and then of course you'll need to. I say you should know some Linux. Now I'm told not a lot of PHP programmers know Linux. Now I've been playing with Linux since 19. 98. Uh, I used it on my desktop for the first time for about eight months in 2000. Uh, I like it. I haven't learned as much about it as I'd like to know, uh, but I can set up servers. I can do all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I, I suggest that if you want to be a PHP programmer, you should learn Linux, and Linux is part of that LAMP stack. Uh, so uh, you, sh you need to know how to troubleshoot. And this kind of goes in hand in hand with uh, the server because a lot of troubleshooting will happen at the server. Uh, some of it's, well, some of it's gonna be in log files and some of it's gonna be returned back to your browser. Um, so uh, I would 
I would definitely uh, recommend that you know how to do, um, how to find the proper log files and be able to uh, decipher any problems you have by the uh, error codes that are put in those, those files. Uh, you're gonna need a code editor. Now, my favorite code editor is Visual Studio Code. It's a cross-platform editor and it's extremely easy to use and it's free. Boy, all the things I like. So it was written by Microsoft. A lot of people that do PHP and Linux and all that, they're, they're not big fans of Microsoft, but we've, we've kind of uh, bellowed on that point a little bit. But Visual Studio Code will run under Linux, Windows, and uh, on, on the Mac. So it's got everything covered and it's, and it's free. And there's lots and lots of videos out there and tutorials. Uh, and you really don't have to know much to, to use it. So, um, okay, so when you get, when you get to making web, web uh, content, you're gonna need uh, some uh, development and production hosting servers. Uh, I, I prefer having a real server, not something that, that loads onto Windows uh, and, and is a uh, emulator. I wanna run the real thing. So you're, prob you're gonna need three, three servers uh, to do production. You're gonna need a development server, which is where you do all your programming. You're gonna need a test servers where, where uh, all your uh, clients and customers will come. When I say customers, I'm talking about your business customer not a customer that's gonna buy something from you. Uh, so they need to be able to come in and do testing and I'll be on a testing server. And then of course you have a production server, which is the server that's out there uh, with the final uh, website. Um, you, you need, a, um, I believe you need to know at least some domain name service. Uh, maybe you don't need to know at all, but you need to know some. Uh, the domain name service is the, uh, the phone book of the internet. The internet w runs on IP addresses and um, you have domain. So your domain goes, uh, is, you know, it goes back to the domain name service and it translates it into an IP, which makes it so that uh, the internet can find your content and deliver it to your browser. Uh, okay, so you need the ability to set and meet timelines. Uh, or deadlines, and you need to do some project management. Now, if you're a beginning entry-level programmer, now, you know that's probably not something you're gonna have to worry about. You're gonna have a lead managers and other people that are gonna uh, do the project management. But as you get more seasoned, you may do some project management. Now, you're gonna need some safe self skills. Communications, that's my pet peeve. Communicate often and communicate with everything and don't disappear for two or three weeks, then come up and say, oh, here, look what I built. You're gonna have problems if you do that stuff. You need to release your so source code and have it tested uh, as often as is possible, even little bitty bites. Um, you're gonna have to know how to work as a, with a team and it can be challenging because I'll tell you what, you get in the cube world, there's some challenges with the office stuff. You need to be able to navigate those situations. Uh, you need to uh, develop a, an ability to find out what's changing. Uh, there's a lot of information on the internet. You need to at least go to the PHP website and read what's going on there. Uh, you need to keep up with uh, MySQL or whatever data engine you're using and the other software that you're using to uh, build your, your applications. You, you need to uh, uh, keep up to date with all that. Boy, here's a tough one. You don't know what you don't know, but you need to figure that out. So uh, people that are more seasoned probably can help you figure out what you don't know so that you will know it. Uh, you might not know what it is, but you'll know that you don't know it and you have to learn it. Uh, and believe me, this is a learning. Uh, there's a lot of learning going on here, uh, especially when you just start out. Uh, you need some empathy. Let me tell you what, you're not going to learn the same way that you're co-workers learn and they need to have empathy as well and the reason being is because people grasp uh, ideas and methodologies differently and at different rates so some people just can absorb it like a, a sponge but they might get tripped up by something else so uh, we need to circle the wagons and we need to take care of each other and help each other learn
Uh, patience. There's, there, you need a lot of patience, especially with your customers. You're going to build applications. You're going to have conversations. They're going to say things that make no sense. They're not going to understand. Uh, you're going to have to talk in, in uh, layman's terms. You're going to have to learn how to boil it down to something a non-technical person can understand. Uh, and then you're going to have to translate it back to yourself into something that makes sense so that you can uh, make some code to do exactly that. Uh, and you need to be open-minded because, let's face it, none of us know all the answers. And uh, most of the time, the other guy has a better answer. So... Uh, you know, and you need some problem solving skills because let me tell you what, when you start putting all this technology together, you're going to need some serious problem solving skills. And, and it's not going to happen in, in the first day. It's going to take a while to develop these skills and it will, your, your brain will burn in all this stuff. And before you know it, you'll be looking in log files, you'll start understanding some of the uh, the, the error messages and you'll learn how to set things up and, and you may, you're never going to know everything. You're always going to have to be looking up stuff. You might know what you want to do, but you won't know exactly how to do it. So you're going to always have to look stuff up and um, you're going to have to have good problem solving skills. You have to develop those. Uh, you're going you're gonna to have to have accountability. If you do something and you blow it, you need to own it. Don't say, well, I'll, I'll make excuses. It doesn't work. Uh, time management. Yeah, put the book down. Quit looking at Facebook, YouTube, or whatever, and get to coding and get to solving problems. And, you know, uh, don't mess around. Manage your time uh, and, and be productive. And that the next thing is exactly that, strong work ethic. You're going to need to have a strong work ethic. Uh, you're going to be left alone a lot. Uh, and they're going to tell you, hey, I want you to go do this, do that, or whatever. And you're, and you're going to be left alone. And so you need to go get to work. Uh, you know, if you need a cup of coffee or go to the bathroom, then get it. But get to work. Okay, so um, I'll let you read a lot of this stuff. I'm going to skip over some of it. Uh, there's something about freelancers there. Uh, there's a, there's some stuff about additional skills required if you specialize. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to this article down in the description and, uh, you, and, and please go read it and enjoy it. And, um, and, if, and, and put a comment uh, on this video uh, what you think, uh, what you've learned, what, what you, what you want to learn and so on. Uh, just write a comment. And so if you found this useful, by all means, uh, subscribe, uh, give the content a thumbs up and, or a like, I think they're called. And uh, by all means, hit that notification bell so that you can get notified the next time I put out a, 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 a video. Uh, because if you want to become a PHP programmer, you're going to want to follow along. So anyway, I hope you're having a great day. Bye now.